What actually works in selling fiction? Sure. Uh, so first and foremost, and you talk a lot about this on your website, which is a great resource for authors, is to put in work before you actually publish the book. So books that do well um, tend to be those that have good editors, that they have people who have proofread them, that the covers look good and are professional. That's the baseline from which the book can take off. So it is really important, I think, for you know, fiction and nonfiction alike, but specifically fiction, to make sure that the quality is there across all of those different things before the book is even published. Um, once the book is out, reviews, getting reviews on the book um, is pretty critical. Um, what we found that I, I personally found very interesting is that the number of reviews is actually more important than the overall review score. So what that means is if you have 10 five-star reviews, that is actually less good from a reader perspective than having 50 reviews with an overall review score of maybe three or three and a half stars. And we work with a lot of authors and we know that it's very upsetting um, when maybe you don't get a four or five star review. But what I would say is take a step back and uh, don't get too upset about that. Rather try and get more reviews for your book. Mm. And the reason we think that this stat holds is because um, readers um, are a little bit skeptical of reviews sometimes. So when they see lots of really high um, rated reviews, but a small number, they kind of assume that, oh, it's the author's, you know, mom and sister and daughter who've reviewed the book. But once you get to 50, 100 reviews, then that, some of that skepticism goes away and they know that some people are going to like, like the book and some are not. I mean, they put a surprise winners out there that probably have, you, that have overall review scores of maybe three, three and a half. You know, it's not for everyone, but just having many reviews really helps to boost the credibility of a book and help the conversion rate of people now who are browsing the book to actually purchase the book. So I would say, you know, go after those reviews um, and try to get as many as possible as you can. Um, the other thing that works really well is, is just you need to teach Amazon that your book is alive and well. And, um, and what your book is about. And Amazon is all algorithm based, as we all know. So what that means is they're just watching um, readers and consumers on their website and what are they clicking and what are they browsing. And they're using that to generate your recommendations. People who browse this also browse this. Oh, you might also like and you see you know, books and titles in there. The only way that they can actually surface your book as if they know something about your book. So you do need to get people going to your book and browsing and clicking and purchasing. Um, one of the ways that, that most authors are doing this today is through price promotions by making your book free or discounting it to drive some traffic there. Um, but the same thing can be done by using the email lists of people that you have or any customer base that you have and, and sending them to Amazon to um, spur some of that activity. Mm. So that's really interesting. I'm particularly, I kind of knew that about reviews. And of course, many, it's it's difficult to get reviews, although you'll find, you know, obviously, you know, having a free book means you generally get more reviews. So I'm almost thinking I should, you know, sort of cycle round my free books so that each of them get more reviews on it. Um, but what I was going to ask you there is genre. Now we, you know, a site like authorearnings.com is is really saying that there, the big genres are, you know, uh, romance, mystery, thriller, sci-fi, fantasy. Is this what you see in terms of your clicks through free booksy and bargain booksy and what do you have any advice for literary fiction or you know anyone who's in the other niches sure so yes we do see um, a lot of the same stats that authors earning is showing our and um, what we call our mass audience head genres are romance mystery fantasy sci-fi um there is hope, though, if you're in a niche genre. It's it's just more about the expectations of the sales that you're going to see because the audience just tends to be slightly smaller. Um, but what we do is we actually, our lists are broken down by the genres that our readers are interested in. So we do have um, readers who like literary fiction or who like, you know, children's books or some of the, the niche genres. Um, and when we send an email to them, they are more apt to download or purchase the book because they have opted into those specific genres. Um, so that's the one thing I would say. Um, the other thing I would say is the advantage to being in a niche genre is there's slightly less competition because, every, you know, most people are publishing in the 
mass market genres because there's more money to be made. But you're, if you're in a new genre, you can um, try some more targeted advertising or reaching out more in a more targeted fashion to your audience. Um, so, for example, one of the things I really like and this is both for nonfiction and for new genres, is to use Facebook ads to target an audience who would be very interested in what your subject matter is. So, um, for example, if you have a nonfiction book around, um, you know, maybe spirituality or, you know, how to feel better about yourself, you could go on Facebook and you could say, I want to serve these ads to people who like um, Eckhart Tolle or, you know, some of those types of influences in that arena because you know those people are more apt towards those books anyway. Whereas when you're in the mass market genres, it's a little bit more difficult. You can say, serve ads to people who like James Patterson, but because it's so broad and the audience is so big, it's actually not quite as targeted as you would be in some of those niche genres. Mm. And of course, um, Eckhart Tolle is a non-fiction author, but what you're saying is as a fiction author in the religious or spiritual niche, you could still target a non-fiction writer because people would be liking that type of stuff. Exactly. You just got to think a little bit out the box and think about who is your reader and what 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 things, what people, personas, other books would they like? Mm -hmm. And then try targeting on those aspects instead of just trying to target on people who like nonfiction books because again that's so broad and everybody's targeting on that so mm. try think about you know some other things it's funny you say that because I just did um uh you know I just did a just a normal post on Facebook and I posted some pictures I went to a cemetery Highgate Cemetery last weekend and I got the most engagement ever on my fiction author profile with these pictures of graves and it made me realize because I love graves I'm a taffophile as as they're known um I love cemeteries and I was like oh my goodness my audience like graveyards and cemeteries so I could actually look at that type of thing which is a little bit weird some people listening and be like she's a weirdo but that's the point that's my fiction <laughs> that's audience. the point right yeah. the people who think oh she's awesome that's your audience those are the people who are going to read your books it's perfect it is so this is the thing think outside the box around themes and other other stuff not just like you say like James Patterson like Lee Child that type of thing